There have been a lot of engines torn down on this channel. Most of them have some sort of cult following or a group of people that really like them, regardless of how good or bad those engines may be to other people. And then there are some engines that everyone likes. The 5.9 Cummins, the Jeep 4 liter, the 4 300 straight six, for example, those are just a couple. And then there are engines that nobody likes. And when I say nobody, I mean nobody. And today we're taking one of those apart. This is a Ford 5.4 liter three valve Triton V8. And I have one of these in my work truck. I know, I know. How could I be so foolish? Well, have you seen what else I drive? I mean, is it really that far off? This fine, fine piece of automotive excellence made its debut in the 2004 Ford F-150. And one year later, the Super Duty received this engine as its base engine option. Alongside of those trucks, the Navigator and Expedition were also equipped with a three valve 5.4. Interestingly, the Econoline never received a three valve 5.4. All the 5.4 Econolines are two valve. Thank God. In 2011, the Ford F-150 went to a 5-liter Coyote or 6.2-liter Boss engine, and the Super Duty received the 6.2-liter as its only gasoline engine. Bewilderingly, I cannot explain Ford's motives here. The Expedition and Navigator still had this engine until like 14 or 15, maybe later. Why? Why? You knew it was trashed by then, Ford. You knew. And you still... When you have the Coyote or the 6.2, both of which are much significantly better engine options, like on, in every measure, but you still chose to use this. Why? It doesn't make any sense at all. When these engines are running, they make about 300 horsepower and 360 foot-pounds of torque, which in a two-wheel drive pickup truck, they actually run pretty good. When you get into the heavier vehicles like a four-wheel drive Super Duty or the SUVs, they're a little on the underpowered side. There are not just a couple of common problems with these engines. And I, I don't work on these every day. I'm not a Ford tech. I'm not a tech at all. I'm just a guy that zips bolts out until parts fall off. But I do know some things based on owning one of these vehicles for quite some time. So the common problems that I know about are, well, the spark plugs break off in the cylinder head, especially in the earlier vehicles. The later vehicles, apparently, they fix that issue or there's an updated spark plug design. They also have plenty of cam phaser problems. And I've heard that the later ones are much better about it, but I've also heard that they still go bad because ours did. The timing chain tensioner is a problem, causes all kinds of racket just off of idle. They have super loud injectors. The exhaust manifolds crack. They have really weak oil pumps. The rockers and followers all fall apart if that chain gets too much slack in it. Uh, the valve covers are extremely porous and they crack if you over tighten them. Exhaust manifold bolts break. I've seen that several times. The variable valve timing solenoids get clogged. They just have problems with everything everything unfortunately this core came with no plugs so we can't ascertain any kind of condition by pulling them and we also can't break them off on camera which kind of bothers me it's okay one thing i can do is show you how this turns over and it's actually it's not great there's no plugs in it so it should just spin Oh, there's a, there's a loose spot in it. it. Does feel like there might be some rust on the cylinder walls. Oh, there's some unhappy noises in this area. So I don't really see any major issues with a quick glance. It actually doesn't look like any water sat in there at all. No issues here either. Nothing yet. Well, the first thing we're going to do is pull a valve cover. We're going to start on the right side of the engine. I typically don't see people using anti-seize as an oil additive, but for some reason, it seems to be kind of sparkly in here. Lots of metal. 
Lots of metal. Ooh, glitter. Lots of sparkles in here. We're off to a good start. There's also this chunk of, it looks like cast aluminum, but it might be, it might be plastic. So that's a good sign. Next, the driver's side. And unfortunately, that means I have to fight the dipstick. Please, please don't fight me. Also, there is an assembly date, 2006. So this came from an 06 or an 07. All right, let's try to get this dipstick out. Well, we're just gonna, perfect. Well, the good news is that all of the followers, all the rockers are in their home. Let's see what we've got here. Well, it is really varnished. And more sparkles. A little bit of cam lobe damage, not terrible. I mean, I guess any damage is damage, right? Lots of sparkles in the timing cover. Well, that's going to be the next thing we get to. Oh, it's going to be like that. It actually doesn't look too bad. Get this harmonic balancer off. It'll just slide right off. Nah, I'm just kidding. All right, let's get this harmonic balancer off. Perfect. Now we'll start on this timing cover. Hey, this would just peel right off. Oh. Uh, oh. Um. There's some stuff in here. It deleted a chain rail. For no real reason either. Wow. Okay. Well, this is a good indicator of what happened. If you remember when I was turning this engine over, there was one side that seemed to have a little bit of noise. And that's because there's supposed to be a rail here. Here's one side of it here. Here's the rail. Why would you, why did that happen? Move that out of the way. There's another piece right there. Okay, timing system. Timing component failure, unheard of in a 5.4. It's not even one of the things I listed. I would love to see if it's in time. Put the bolt back in it. Well, I can tell you the driver's side bank, the left bank is in time. I've got the dot pointed down and the arrow is pointed in the right direction. Now, in this same situation, the R the arrow is looks like it's a tooth or two off. So if it did jump time, it only jumped a couple teeth. It may still actually be in time and it could just be because there's no rail. That's probably what it is. It's probably that rail takes some of the slack out and rotates that cam a little further. So if it did jump time, it didn't jump far. Time to peel all these chains off. I'm just gonna zip these bolts out and see what happens. Oh, nothing. That was a kind of a letdown. Ah, oh, there. Now it's in time. That looks good. That's that's kind of under some tension. Ah, oh, it's fine, right? Yeah, it's fine. It, it can't hurt me. I'm just gonna look the other direction. It's fine. 
Yeah. That wasn't too bad. That rail looks good. And I still have that one to go, but we can probably just delete this chain real quick. Yeah, I think it's jumped a tooth. That's pretty worn. All right, one final rail. Now this was the mirror of the one that broke on the other side. And let's see, is this strong? I mean, this is pretty strong. I don't, I don't know that this would just come apart. Maybe something caused it to come apart. I mean, it is kind of chewed up along that top edge. I guess there's supposed to be a ledge here, and there isn't. Get that chain off of there. One thing I wanted to show you is the inside of the timing cover. That's worn from the timing chain making contact with it. Pretty severely too. So that could be why everything looks like it's got anti-seize on it. And this is the chain off of the driver's side bank, the one that had two guides for the timing chain, not just one. And this is the one that had one. And it looks like it definitely has more wear. It's really hard to say if it jumped time though by looking at the chain. All right, I'm gonna take a minute and remove the exhaust manifolds. That one broke. Come on, will you just? Okay. Oh, come on. Ha! Well, it turns now. I win this round. Now, I don't need to pull the cams out of this to get the heads off, but I'm going to because I want to take a look at the journals. These are really loose. I don't know why. Uh-oh. That's not good. Look at the deep grooves that these cam caps have. Definitely some oil starvation. And the cams have matching grooves. The front of the cam's not so bad, but as you get away from the front, it's pretty bad. That journal is pretty torn up as well. The others really aren't as bad. Now, to break the head bolts loose, I always use my half-inch drive breaker bar, but I'd like you to pay attention to the fact that it's bent. So, Matt, one of my guys here, used this with, I think, a jack handle to get a crank pulley bolt out of a Duramax engine, and that's the result. So, apparently, you can damage this breaker bar, but we're still going to use it to pull the head bolts out. Time to lift a head. Oh yes. Oh, it's gonna do that. Well, this head gasket out of the way without slicing my fingers. Definitely had some rust. That's probably why I had a really tight spot. It's got rust in multiple cylinders. Ooh, a really deep, really deep groove in that cylinder. Boy, that might be. That might be the end of this block right there. 
That one too. Yeah. Not so great. Oh, this is a cylinder with a really, really deep groove. It's right there. And then, and then this cylinder here has lots of rust pitting and stains. If this block is salvageable, it's going to need to go overboard. I don't know if it'll go far enough. There's no signs of contact between the valves and the pistons, so that's good. The cylinder head looks pretty disgusting, but I don't see any... Nothing looks bent. I don't think these valves made contact with anything. There's just definitely some water sitting in it. On to the other side. These must not have very much torque. Nope. So the cam journals don't look too bad. But this cam journal here, that's got some pretty bad grooves in it. The cam caps, however, they're pretty rough. That's pretty unfortunate. These heads are worth some money when they're good. Well, there is still, I don't know that I would call that water but there's engine fluid in that cylinder. Let's turn this engine over now that the heads are off. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, the good news is that all the rods are connecting rods. I don't see any marks on any pistons from being out of time or no debris. I think every piston goes to the top of the bore, right? Well, as far as they're supposed to, anyway. Yes. The good news is we'll be able to get this apart. The bad news is this rear cylinder has some really deep grooves in it. That actually, I don't think that's a crack. I don't know. That's pretty bad. I don't know if an overbore would fix that. That cylinder's got some too. Yep. I wonder why. This head looks just like the other side. Obviously it had some engine fluid sitting in it. Now we can turn this thing upside down and pull the pan. I'm, I'm sure that it's not gonna make a mess or anything. It just, it wouldn't do that. I don't know what you call that fluid coming out of this, but it's like a mustard milkshake. Thankfully it doesn't smell like one. Oh, I hear some loose stuff in there. I did not anticipate that. Let's get this pan off. Okay. Got one bolt head that's deformed. It'll come out. So this will probably just lift off. Okay, ooh, it's like the Milky Way. I'm not kidding, but there's a lot of timing components in there. I wish I could just put some clear coat over that and hang it on my wall. Sparkles and timing components. What more could you ask for? Look how beautiful this is. It's like glittery and like I said, it's like the Milky Way. Or like you're painting for gold in some mustard milkshake. 
Uh, you can see there's chunks of timing guide in there. I wonder what we'll find in the pickup. There's definitely some things in here. It's part of a guide. What else we got in here? More, more guide. Yeah. It's amazing what you can fit in one of these things. Ooh, sparkles. And that pickup just sucked up this stuff. The bad thing is that all this plastic will float very easily in oil. So that pickup's just right there for it. I guarantee you we're going to find some bearing damage. Next, we'll pull the oil pump. Let's take a look at this oil pump. First, I wanted to mention that there's some wear on the housing from the chain. That thing was making some noise. Oh yeah, there's definitely been some metal through here. Most definitely. It's not as bad as we've seen. We saw a couple that looked way worse than that. But this outer housing especially, lots of grooves in it. It's very rough textured. And that would match the same rough texture on the outside of the drive gear. And this as well. Now it's time to pull the rods and pistons out. And as always, we're going to start at the front. Got one ring laying out. All that rust at the top of the bore. Oh, some of that engine fluid just came out. Last and least. Oh, starting at the front, you can definitely see that the bearings have some decent wear. And as you get towards the back of the engine, it gets more prevalent. And then when you get back towards the rear two cylinders, they are pretty rough. They look bad. Now the pistons look okay, but a lot of them have rings stuck in the ring lands. Probably from rust and moisture. Like that one there, that top compression ring is stuck. And then the skirts have some pretty significant wear. I would not reuse these pistons. I think the rods are okay, but the pistons, not so much. Yeah, it looks pretty not so good. It's a technical term in there. And there's some more of that engine fluid 
All that's left is to pull the main caps and get the crank out. Okay, this should come right out. The main bearings are pretty torn up. It was definitely starved of oil thanks to some timing components in the pickup. The crank doesn't look too bad. It can probably be salvaged, it'll need a polish, and it will need to be checked. But there's no big deep grooves, it didn't spin any bearings. It's not as bad as it could have been. Here's a better look at how terrible these bores look. Those are some pretty deep scratches there. It definitely sat with some water in it. That's not even the worst of it though. This is very deep. Can you bore it out? I'm sure you could, but is it worth it? It might not be. None of these bores look particularly good and there's more deep scratches there. For a three valve, that really wasn't too bad. All it did was obliterate one of the timing guides. All that material ended up in the oil and then in the oil pickup, which clogged it and starved it of oil. It's not really that bad for a three valve. And what I mean by that is when these engines fail, it's usually in a much worse way. I've seen them obliterate an entire head's worth of rockers. I've seen them break valve springs, drop valves, and I've seen them throw rods through the block in a pan. Lots of different failure modes with the 543 valve engines. And I, I don't really see that same type of issue with the 463 valve, and I don't really know why. I do sell those engines, so if you need a 3 valve 46, like out of a Mustang, I usually have those in stock. But I don't sell 3 valve 54s. And the reason I don't is that I offer a warranty with my parts. I don't want to offer a warranty on a 3 valve 54. I just there's plenty of other parts to sell. If you'd like to buy a few of the parts off of this engine, which really, there's not much, maybe a crank and a harmonic balancer and the exhaust manifolds, that's pretty much it. But I didn't really pay much for this course, so it doesn't really matter. If you'd like to buy parts off of this 08535, I, all of these parts are available. I'll leave our email in the video description. And I know some of you are wondering, did the Porsche make it to the European Auto Show? No. And it's not that I didn't put it together, it's that I don't have the parts yet. I'm still waiting on the IMS bearing, and I, I refuse to put that car together without replacing that part. It would be so foolish to cut that corner and then have to do it again in the future, or maybe it fail. It's not worth it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.